this project, you need a pencil and eraser, glue stick, scissors, ink pads, craft foam, either in pre-cut shapes or sheets, and something to glue your stamps onto. So either cardboard, wooden blocks, or corks, or whatever you can find around the house. So the first kind of stamp we're gonna make will be using pre-cut foam shapes. So sometimes you can go ahead and find some pre-cut shapes like this that actually have an adhesive backing already on it. Or if you find shapes like this that don't, what you'd be doing is using some glue to attach your shape to a backing. Although it is fun to use the pre-cut shapes like stars and flowers, I'd encourage you to use your imagination and try to combine the shapes to create different pictures. So for example, I have here some squares, hearts, triangle. And what could we make with these shapes? One thing we could do is cut this in half and make a sailboat. But I'm kind of must be feeling hungry because seeing this all I can think of is an ice cream cone. So you can use a pair of scissors to change the shapes that you have to combine them and to create your own picture. So what I'm gonna do is in order to create, uh, make the ice cream fit in the ice cream cone, just cut the bottom. And there we have a one scoop ice cream. But I could always use cherry on top. Like that. Don't worry too much about the color of your foam because that isn't what you'll see. You will see the color of the ink you use. So don't worry about combining different colors um, on your stamp itself. Now once you have finished um, arranging and cutting your shapes, what you'll do is um, glue them onto a backing. So I'm going to be using cardboard today, but you could use something like a wooden block or a cork. Or even I used um, a tin to create a stamp. So it all depends on the size of your stamp and what materials you have available. So what I'm going to do first is move off my shapes. And you'll want to be generous with your glue. And press the foam firmly into the glue to make sure that it's glued on all sides. In fact, actually, I'm going to leave a little gap between the ice cream and the cone, and that gap will show up as a line on my stamp. So always think about both the positive space and the negative space, or the space between your shapes. Again, press it down. And I'll do the same right there. You don't have to do that. If you want, you can have your shapes touching. Um, it'll just come up with uh, either a line or no line. Once you've glued your shapes to your backing, leave it to the side to dry. And what's a great thing you can do while you're waiting for it to dry is make another stamp. So you can make pictures, but you can also make patterns. So if you have a lot of geometric shapes, think about different ways you can arrange them to create patterns because then remember, with each stamp, you will stamp or can stamp multiple times to create a much bigger pattern. So think of a pattern, a large pattern you can create by creating smaller design elements like these. Now lastly, after your glue has dried, you can use a ballpoint pen or a pencil and actually draw onto the foam. Now, these lines will actually appear as white or the color of your paper when you do your print. 
because what we're doing is something called relief printmaking. Again, meaning that just the surface, the raised part will get the ink from the stamp pad. So any lines that are grooves won't get any ink. So um, all you do is using your pen, you'll just go over and create lines by pressing in and creating those grooves, almost like you're carving into it. And so that's another way of using pre-cut shapes. For this next stamp, what I'm gonna do is actually draw out my design first and then transfer it over to a sheet of the craft foam and cut it out. So I'm not using the pre-cut shapes. I'm actually gonna design it completely from scratch. So I've been playing a pretty fun game lately um, and I thought that the characters in that game looked really cute. So I thought I'd make a stamp. So um, I've drawn out my character on a piece of white paper and I've made sure that my lines are quite dark with my pencil. And the reason for this is we are actually going to be pressing this down onto the craft foam. Um, and what's great about doing this uh, technique is this way the stamp, the image you end up with will be the same as your drawing. So you don't have to worry about the fact that our stamps always get reversed. So draw the picture you, way you would like it to appear in your final stamp um, and then it'll get reversed and then reverse back. It'll all make sense in a minute. So just to uh, show that I will do an initial on my astronaut. Next, get a piece of craft foam. I'm using this stuff with a sticky back, but you can just use a glue stick and use regular craft foam. And I'd suggest you try to find sheets of white or light colored. That way it's easier for your pencil lines to show up. So what I'll do is just cut around my shape The only reason I'm doing that is just so I know roughly where the design will end up on my sheet of craft foam. Because I know a lot of people like to just put it right in the middle. But remember, we're gonna cut this out, which means you'll be wasting all the rest of your foam sheet. So I try to find uh, and use the materials up from the corner, and then I've got all this material to do large stamps, um, any size I'd like. So I'm gonna place my design here in the bottom corner and hold it in place with one hand so it doesn't move. And then you're gonna press down and rub and your pencil lines will transfer onto the foam. Okay, and you can check it. Yeah, and there it is. So it's very faint, but I can see it. So I'm just gonna go over my lines again And you'll notice that the M is actually backwards now. Like that. Next, we just have to cut it out and stick it onto a backing. Now, the last step will be to use our ballpoint pen and go over any lines that we want to show up. So over my letter M and this line here for the backpack, like that. Now I'm gonna cut away the rest of this cardboard uh, so it doesn't get in the way, just like I've done with my first stamp. Now one final tip, you do not have to do the entire uh, picture in one stamp. You can actually create stamps that are just part of a picture. So if you wanna do a really big picture, 
think about ways that you could actually break down the elements into smaller pieces like this flower petal, which I will just stamp repeatedly to get um, the whole flower. Or you could do a series of letters to make a word rather than doing the entire word in one go. Or you can do things like doing parts of a picture that are different colors using different ink. Now comes the fun part, getting to actually use your stamps. So you can just use regular uh, copy paper like I have here. Um, if you want to do a big sheet, um, you can use tissue paper uh, and make your own wrapping paper at home. Or you can experiment with using different types of paper, like this is from an old dictionary that was going to be recycled. So instead I took the sheets and um, I like to make art with them. So don't think, feel like you have to just use uh, blank paper. So there's different kinds of stamp pads you can use. This is just one I got at an office supply store, just a regular ink stamp. And these are, it's a slightly different kind of ink. And what's nice about these, aside from the fact that they come in lots of colors, is that the pad itself is raised up so that if you're doing a large stamp, you can actually move the stamp pad around and do um, sort of a bigger size that might fit in um, a regular size stamp pad. So let's give this a try. I am going to start with my ice cream cone. So let's try some pink. And the thing is, your first few times stamping, um, your image might be a little faint as you're just building up the ink on the surface of the craft foam. So again, the goal is not to be perfect. The goal is to have fun while you're making these and learn while you're doing it. So I don't expect my first stamp will look perfect. So I'm just gonna press the ink on. This one might be a little dry. Let's give this a try. And then I'm pressing down. And there is my ice cream cone. And you can see how the lines that I've left clear have actually shown up um, in my final design. So really play around when you're coming up with your designs with positive space and negative space. And all that means is the actual parts of your image that will show up and then the space around it and between the shapes. So a really great example of that is this really cool stamp that a friend of mine made and gave to me where you can see that they've really thought about creating um, the design by leaving some white space. So let's see what that would look like. And this time I'm actually gonna try using the stamp pad. So again, first design might not be perfect, but we'll just give it a try. So again, because this is so big, I'm gonna press down all around so that all parts of my design can get ink on them. You might press it a few times. Now, some of my young friends, when they do stamping, what they do is they think, if I hit the top of this stamp, it'll work. It's not gonna make it work any better. Pressing is much better than actually hitting it. So all you need to do is press down your, with your fingers. Don't actually hit it. All right, well, let's see. So we've got lots of nice ink. And let's see what our stamp will look like. And again, I'm gonna press. Without moving it up and down, I'm just pressing. And there's my fish. I think he's upside down. Now, another thing you can do when you're actually doing your stamping is combining um, different elements together to make a picture. So for uh, this stamp, I made this stamp for um, Remembrance Day because I was thinking about poppies. But rather than do a single poppy on one stamp, I did one leaf of the poppy. And let's see, turn my paper around to get a blank area. So you can repeat 
your stamp to create a bigger picture. And then I created a stamp for the center of the poppy and this time I'll use a different color. Go back to our black. And I find using cork or pieces of wood is a lot easier for me to handle, but sometimes if you don't have access to these things, cardboard works okay. So now I've got the ink on and I'll stab that to create my poppy. So you really can combine different colors together if you divide up your final picture into different elements. And this is what printmakers have been doing for hundreds of years, creating um, really complex finished images by um, doing separate elements of the final design on different um, printing plates, they would be called, as opposed to these smaller ones, which are just stamps. Let's try out this design. Now this design actually has lines drawn into it um, to create uh, a pattern or a design. So if you've done that with your designs, that should appear just as white as the background of the paper. So let's give it a try and see how it looks. And again, especially the first time you use a stamp, you might want it to try it a few times in the ink. Okay, so let's give this a try. And I place it down, hold it in place so it doesn't move, and press down with my fingers. And there's my butterfly. So here you can see everywhere I drew with my ballpoint pen to create this design, that creates the lines. So really feel, don't feel limited to just using the designs that you know are pre-cut or pre-made. You can create your own amazing images yourself. So for my character, what I thought I might try is actually using two different colors. Now make sure that these are your stamps and that you're not borrowing them from someone because you probably will get the ink mixed up a little bit. Um, so ch always check to make sure you're allowed to do this before you try it. But seeing as um, I bought these at the dollar store, um, they're only a dollar each. So I thought I might have fun and try it out. Uh, maybe it'll work. Maybe it'll look totally weird. I don't know. But that's the great thing about playing around with art. You might discover something cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by doing purple on the top and then fade it out and then do blue on the bottom. And let's see what it looks like. So I'll just concentrate the ink on the top and then just put a bit sort of down to the middle like that. I'm going to start with my lightest color because um, it's okay if I get a little bit of the purple in the blue, but if I get the blue in the purple, it might be really hard to get out. All right. So again, I want the darkest blue at the bottom and then just kind of fade it up like that. And let's see what it looks like. Pretty cool. Now that you've seen how to make prints using homemade stamps, let's look at some prints by professional artists. These artworks are featured in our exhibition Selected Stories 1980-2020, which showcases a selection of works from the Richmond Art Gallery's permanent collection and which celebrates the gallery's 40th anniversary. This first artwork is by Gu Zhang, who is a Vancouver-based artist originally from Sichuan, China. In this artwork, he's expressing his experiences of being a new immigrant in Canada, 
where he worked in a cafeteria handling large trays of cutlery. To make a print this big, instead of making a stamp, he used a process called screen printing, which uses a large stencil applied to a screen. Ink is then pushed through the screen with a big squeegee. This next artwork by Musqueam artist Susan Point is also a screen print. Inspired by the traditional values and legends passed down by her mother, Susan has been a key figure in the revival of Coast Salish art. The inspiration for this print, Mystical Whirl, is the traditional spindle whirl, which is an elaborately carved wooden disc used in the spinning of wool. To create this print, she has used two stencils, first applying a circle of yellow ink, then printing the design in brown ink on top to create a two-color design. This screen print by Panina Granerer demonstrates how different colors of ink can be layered on top of each other. Panina was born in Romania in 1935 and immigrated to Canada in 1965, settling in Vancouver. She gets ideas for her work from her personal experiences and her Romanian cultural background. Creating a screen print such as this requires many different stencils so that the different ink colors can be added one on top of another. Layering the ink in this way allows for the creation of new colors wherever the layers overlap, creating a sense of depth like in this forest scene. This artwork by Betty Jean Drummond was created using a different printmaking process called etching. Betty was born in Alberta and studied painting and commercial art in Toronto with members of the Group of Seven. In 1962, she moved to Vancouver, working as a commercial artist while studying printmaking at the Vancouver School of Art. Her work is characterized by richly textured landscapes in vivid colors. Like screen printing, etching allows an artist to use a range of colors. Etching is similar to stamping, but instead of small rubber or foam stamps, large flat sheets of metal are used and the picture is carved into the metal with sharp tools and the use of acid. Ink is then brushed onto the metal plates and then the image is applied to a sheet of paper using a printing press. Lastly, in these prints by Anna Wong, we can see that many other art techniques can be combined with printmaking to make an artwork. Anna Wong was born in 1930 in Vancouver's Chinatown. She studied Chinese brush painting in Hong Kong and graduated from the Vancouver School of Art. She represented Canada in a number of international print biennials, and her original prints received many international prizes. Anna developed a complex method of printing by combining screen printing, layers of colored tissue paper, collage, photography, and hand coloring. These prints feature picture postcards of tourist attractions in China and are part of a series of artworks called the Great Wall Series. Anyway, that's it for printmaking with craft foam. I hope you had fun and um, happy art making.